The Renaissance was a period in the history of Europe, spanning from the 14th to the 17th centuries AD. Renaissance is a French word meaning rebirth. The period is called by this name because at that time people started taking an interest in the learning of ancient times, in particular that of ancient Greece and Rome. The Renaissance was seen as a rebirth of that learning. The Renaissance is often said to be the start of the modern age. As Europe shifted from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance, the daily life of the average person changed as well. People began to enjoy more luxuries, nicer clothes, finer foods and the arts. There were more craftsmen, artisans and merchants who developed into a middle class of people who had sufficient money to keep themselves from poverty. The typical home for a poor farmer was a one-room hut, but wealthier merchants began to live in larger and more spacious homes. These homes, while relatively luxurious, would have been damp, cold and dark compared to today's standards. Running water was a pipe dream and bathrooms were virtually non-existent. During the Renaissance, creative storytelling was starting to become big, with many plays and oratorios being written and acted out. The majority of people at the time couldn't read or write, but those who could would write these plays so that the illiterate could have some form of entertainment. Music was also popular throughout the Renaissance, however this music was usually improvised in contrast to today's and was used mainly for storytelling purposes. Genres were also popularised for the first time, including religious song, folk music and lullabies and nursery rhymes for the children. Along with music, the Renaissance also had dance. The nobility usually danced in couples, and these were stylized courtly dances. Ordinary people enjoyed folk dances similar to today's square dances and jigs. During the Renaissance, religious leaders had a great deal of influence on government and other aspects of public and private life. The Catholic Church grew during this time, its leaders were getting richer and the church was growing in number and wealth. Christianity as a whole, however, was still seeing a decline from the bubonic plague in the early stages of the Renaissance. It was possibly because of this that philosophies like humanism became more popular. Employment was average during the Renaissance. Most people had jobs, but a large number of these were very low paying, meaning that not many people had money to spare. Those who had talent, such as a certain William Shakespeare, would make plenty of money and, provided they didn't squander it, also lived a lavish life. This caused a great distinction between those who were worse off and those who were better off. You either had money and lived the high life or had no money and lived in poverty. A typical woman would stay at home and look after the household children and cooking. Women didn't have the rights they have today and the husband was very much in charge of the house. The wife's role was to overlook cooking and other preparations and to make sure that a tight budget was kept while simultaneously showing off her and her husband's wealth. Their assumed role was to look pretty beside the husband and it was expected that they wouldn't even consider a career. Italy, the place where the Renaissance supposedly began, had a system upon which it was divided into states that was subsequently ruled by dukes, duchesses and sometimes very rich families. However, countries like Spain and England had monarchies or kings and queens as their heads of state. In the case of England, Queen Elizabeth ruled the country from 1558 to 1603, the time of her death. Under her rule, England received over 300 proclamations that governed their lifestyle. A pattern observed in most monarchies of this era was that the people tended to follow the example of their leader obsessively. For example, when Queen Elizabeth's teeth rotted from consuming too much sugar, her loyal subjects painted their teeth black to copy her. There was a large enforcement of the division between the numerous social classes, the monarch, nobility, gentry, merchant, yeomanry, and laborers. The monarch, leader of the country and their royal subjects. This class was exclusive to the royal bloodlines. The nobility, the noblemen and knights made up the nobility class, which governed England's upper class. The gentry, the gentlemen and gentlewomen made up the rest of the upper class, being defined as those who didn't have to work for a living. They were the most important class in society owing to their wealth and the numbers to which they grew. The merchant and yeomanry. The middle class of society consisted of the merchants who exploited new advances in commerce and trade, and the yeomanry who, while not poor, were always on the brink of poverty. The labourers, the artisans, masons, anyone who did their work with their hands belonged to the labourer class. Poorest of them all, this class did the majority of the work for the country. Food was a very important part of the Elizabethan society. 200 of the Queen's 382 proclamations were food related. With advances in farming and trade, spices that were previously exclusive to the monarchy because of its high value was now readily available to the upper and middle classes. 
Spices such as turmeric were infused into every meal when possible. This characteristic of overuse of spice became a trademark of the guest hosting lady, to show off with spices when guests were around, but to keep a tight ship when they weren't. The other famous aspect of Elizabethan dining was the head-to-tail principle of eating, leaving nothing to waste, eating every last part of meat that was to be found. Clothing was culturally important in that it reflected the person's status in the social classes. The clothing was exclusive to class. It was absurd to think of a labourer wearing the clothes of a nobleman or gentry. The upper classes wore expensive fabrics made from exotic velvets, silks and satin. The clothes of the royal family were trimmed with ermine, the fur of a stoat, and the clothes of noblemen were usually trimmed with less expensive fox and otter fur. In contrast to this, the impoverished peasants of England wore simple clothes made of English cotton, fur and leather. Colour also played a role in clothing. The richer, brighter and deeper the colour, the more it cost. Thus, the royalty wore crimson colours that could only be obtained from obscure places such as the blood of insects from the Mediterranean. The bottom line is that just like food and architecture, clothes were a form of showing off. In 1576, the theatre was built. This was the first theatre in England and it was used to host plays and other events. Some years later, the theatre was attracting more people than it could seat and was rebuilt and renamed the Globe Theatre. The Globe was very successful, it had its own motto and crest, and plays and entertainment became so big that a second Hope Theatre was built just next door. Many different plays were performed at the Globe, written by many different playwrights, one of them being Shakespeare. The Queen attended many of these, and there was an advertising banner above the entrance. This made this form of entertainment very popular and very profitable. The Renaissance observed a severe decline in religion, that is, the church experienced a severe drop in power. Many attribute this to the bubonic plague of the 14th century. People came to church almost daily to pray for their loved ones, but still, people died. This could be what led to the show-off lifestyle and lavish living that the nobility experienced during the Elizabethan era, an inflated sense of self. Humanism, while it could be described as a philosophy, is more accurately thought of as a way of learning. The purpose of humanism was to create a universal man whose person combined intellectual and physical excellence and who was capable of functioning honourably in virtually any situation.